Hey, it's JP here. We've got our hands on the new Panasonic Lumix S52X. Very excited about this camera because it is an ultimate, I think, crossover hybrid video stills camera. It does great stills, it does great video. It has some very pro high-end video capabilities and I think that's what stands it out. Well, it is what sets it apart from the S52. Let's take a look at what those are. I think though, basically starting off, we need to really understand this camera is almost exactly the same footprint, autofocus, form factor, everything as the S52. So the S52X really has everything that the S52 has. It's the same still camera. You've got the same body, with the exception of you have a blackened out logo on the front, which is very awesome, I have to say. But otherwise, it's the exact same body, which I love the grip on this body. I love the uh, function of being able to get into the buttons to be able to make this body work. I love the autofocus that, uh, that Panasonic came out with. That's been incredible. So it has incredible autofocus. It's got the same 24 megapixel sensor. Has the same beautiful stabilization inside. Got nine frames per second with 30 frames per second electronic. Great color in stills and in video. It really is the same. It is the same camera. But they've added some additional, one additional still feature, which will be updated in the S52, and several video features you could only get in the S52X without paying for an update. So let's take a look at what those are because those are what set this apart and make this very exciting for me and make this a higher end, more professional video camera. So what makes the S52X worth $200 more than the S52? Well, there's several features. One's a still feature that actually will come in both these cameras, but comes right now with the S52X, and that is Live View Composite. This is a great process where you can set up an image of a person, maybe use a strobe on the person, and then if there's cars blurring by, you can look on the back of the camera in Live View and you can see the image building. You can see the, the streaks of the cars until you finally get to the point where you feel like it's exactly where you want it, then you can stop your long exposure. So it's a fun thing. We're going to show you some examples of that. That's live view compositing. So you're really compositing. You're, it's showing you what's happening in that long exposure as you're making it, and then you get to decide when you're going to end it. So that's a fun feature that's been in Panasonic cameras for a long time. But this is the first Panasonic camera that has come out with when it's released. So the S52X has that uh, live view compositing. Another example is the nighttime skies. You put it in the sky, you can see the stars start to trail. It's a great way to work if you're doing long exposures and you get to see exactly what's happening without doing a super long exposure and looking at it and having to start over again. So I think that feature is really awesome. Here's some examples of that. So I'm doing the live view compositing. Watch this car as it goes by. You see it? There goes the red line, the tail lights. So what it does is it does a base plate exposure and then in the live view you get to watch it's going to slowly lay in the uh, light that changes and creates the streaks. So the base exposure doesn't change, the base plate, the, the background plate, or our main plate doesn't change, but as the cars go through, it's gonna lay the lines in there. So I can leave sitting here, cars aren't going through very often, I'll wait, another one will go by, and you'll watch it. You'll watch it as they come down. You'll see it kind of just go down the line, and it kind of paints in. And you can wait and say, okay, I like that one, I want more, wait longer, do as much as you want with it, it's pretty cool. And then when you're done, you hit the shutter, hit the Q button, and it's going to uh, composite your image and you've got your final image. Let's talk about the features now in video that really make this worth the $200. The first one is that through the USB port, you can attach an SSD drive. That gives you a lot of great options. Number one is size, large SSD drives. You can put two terabytes on one of these little Samsung uh, drive. A two terabyte drive here is about $300. So not only does it give you a lot of space, it also gives you a very reasonable amount of money to get two terabytes worth of space. CF Express cards are not gonna be that cheap. You're gonna be spending a lot of money for all those cards. So even though it only has the two SD cards inside, using the SSD card outside to the, through the USB port gives you ample storage space that allows you to have better heat issues because it's not going to heat up as much. It's outside here. It's quick. It's fast because it's SSD. It's going to support the uh, speed you need to be able to write 10 bit 6K, 24 and 30 frames uh, per second uh, kinds of Kodak. So that's going to make it possible with that SSD drive. That's a huge advantage for this camera. I think it works when you attach it to some kind of a rig that holds it in place. You've got to create a situation where this is going to be solidly in place 
I've got a, a Condor rig here on it. We've got a little uh, attachment that actually is made for the Samsung uh, a T5, it's going to clamp onto it, allows me to cable it in, lock the cables in place, and now I can shoot away. I've shot at Atmos recorders for a long time and I've never had a problem. So I think this external SSD drive is pretty important. So this camera allows you to get ProS RAW or B-RAW, which if you really want high quality, the highest quality you can get, that's a great way to go. I'm more inclined to use this in a, in, with the SSD drives because that gives me as much information, beautiful Kodak, beautiful pictures. It really gives me complete control. But you do have the ability to do RAW with this camera, which for some people is going to be huge. So the S52X gives you also all intra uh, compressions. What's nice about the all intra compression is that it is a single, each image is a single image that's compressed. It makes it so that it, when you go to edit in a non-linear editing, your program is not trying to render all the images. Whereas a lot of the uh, compressions out there, the program is having to render all of the different images between the the iframe, the P-frame, the B-frame, and put all those together, and just really slows down the editing process. All Intra is much quicker to get into a non-linear editing situation, allows you to cut quicker, and is a great compression. The X has a video output, so you can connect this to either an Atomos or a Blackmagic recorder, and to be able to do RAW to that device as well, which gives you a monitor and RAW or other codecs, which gives you a lot of different options. So the S52X is really made to live stream. Whether it's wireless IP streaming, or if it's USB connected to your phone, or if it's wired IP uh, live streaming, this camera is made to live stream. That's one of the major advantages for this $200 upgrade, is you get the ability to live stream with this camera. My first camera, a beautiful Pentax ME with interchangeable lenses, and everything looked magical in that camera. It's fantasy land, and I thought, man, if I could make a living doing this, <laughs> how crazy. Fantasy. And then, you know, to go and work with all the great artists that I have been working with is just, you know, incredible. So my advice for young photographers out there, find your voice. Find what it is you really want to tell the world with your art. Try not to copy everyone else. It's okay to, like Mick Jagger said, great to steal from other artists, but make it your own, like they did with all the great blues songs that the Stones covered. Hey, I'm Rob Shanahan. I'm a drummer, a photographer, and endorser of the SKB case. They get all my gear and my drums safely to where I need to go. So video really is the strength of the S52X. So the question for me became, is it necessary to go to an SSD drive and to have that Apple ProRes on the SSD drive? Or is it fine uh, internally with the SD card? So I just wanted to look at the, some footage on the SSD drive, some footage on the SD card, the best footage as far as quality wise, and just compare those and just see exactly what we get. So the first thing I shot here, this is on the SSD drive. This is the 5.8K uh, at 30P and the 4K uh, side by side. You know, it's immediately, the footage, the 5.8K is, is just much clearer, uh, very crunchy, you got a little more black, it's very pretty. Both of these are very beautiful uh, images with regards to the color depth. Uh, when you look at the color rendition though, I think the reds and things are a little stronger with the uh, 5.8K, which you would expect to see. It's hard to see this because we're showing this to you on a 4K monitor, a 4K export. So, but there is an example of those two, but this is really worth noting. The uh, ProRes uh, 5.8K gives you 7.54 gigs for a 30 second uh, clip. Whereas the 4K gives you 3.79 gigs for a 30 second clip. So you're getting doing about 3.9 gigabytes for a 30 second clip that's in 4K, uh, 30 frames a second uh, in the Apple ProRes to the SSD card, uh, SSD uh, drive. So that's that's a lot of space you're moving this doesn't we didn't even look at the atomos which gets to raw i mean you're talking a tremendous amount of data you're gonna have to move around it's hard to move this data around when i look at it on our computers and things it becomes it becomes a bit of a challenge i think the footage in both these situations is really beautiful uh you see the the flowers the way they're moving it's just the motion capture uh, it's just really uh, beautiful images uh, do I need to go with this much quality? Probably not for a lot of things I do, but would I go to this if I'm doing something a little higher end, more professional? Absolutely. 
and I could stay on that SSD drive. This is a pretty good place to be if you have the space for it and the ability to uh, move this footage around, which is one of the reasons why an SSD drive is nice because you can move that right to the editing process and you can not have to move that information around as much, all those clips around as much, you just keep it on that SSD drive. All right, so now let's take a look at what we can do internally on the SD card. So here's the best quality video we can get to the SD card inside the uh, S52X. So the all I for in 4K is gonna be a 1.56 gigabyte clip for 30 seconds, whereas the long GOP is going to be uh, 606 megabytes. Uh, for 30 seconds. These are both 4K, 24P, uh, and they're also all shot in 16.9. And it is interesting as I look at these two, you expect the long gop to be more compressed because it is just giving you keyframes and it's going to have to render all of this when you get it into the uh, nonlinear editing. Whereas the All I is giving you each of those frames, and that's why it's a larger file, and, but it's going to be much faster to edit when you get it onto the uh, nonlinear uh, editing line because it already has all the images there. It doesn't have to render them all like it does with the long up. So in looking at this, I, I, it's just, they are both beautiful. I actually love the All I a lot. I think the color depth is beautiful. I feel like the greens are excellent. Uh, the reds are excellent. Um, I think the long gop is great as well. It's just, it, it is a smaller uh, file, it's more compressed. But for most of my use, this is probably a beautiful place to be. I could shoot a lot of corporate video on this without any problem. It's going to fit the need for most of what people have to do. Um, but what I love about having the ability to go to an SSD uh, drive is that I can step up from this Kodak and give myself more information uh, the ability to color grade better, all those kinds of things are gonna make themselves available as you go to the SSD drive and the Apple ProRes. Unfortunately, internally to the SD card, the most you can get out of it uh, with, when it comes to Apple ProRes is, uh, is 2K, 1080p. And so at uh, that point, that's a small file. That's 913 megs, Apple ProRes, that's internal to the SD card. And that's a pretty small file. I think most of what people are doing these days uh, it demands 4K and one of the reasons why that 5.8K is so nice is because it does allow you to be able to punch in and to be able to reframe a little bit and it gives you those options in editing. So that's the, the 2K um, Apple ProRes. I mean, it's a very pretty image. Uh, I really like the All Eye a lot. I feel like the uh, image, the footage looks good. So conclusion for me is I personally love the look of the All Eye. It's a larger file uh, because it's not as compressed as the Long Gop, but it gives you a beautiful image and it's going to be fast to work uh, with on the uh, nonlinear editing line. And you have 400 megabits. So I think that's a great sweet spot to be to the SD card. But if you want to go to the SSD drive, you can now shoot this stuff all day long. So, there's a look at the footage. All right, let's wrap this up. If you shoot stills and stills only, then the camera you need is the S5 II. You don't really need the S5 IIx because most of the upgrades, well, all of the upgrades you're gonna get with the S5 IIx are really about video. But if you do shoot video and you have a crossover kind of workflow at all, and most photographers these days, videographers, are asked to do both. It's really interesting how you get that request most of the time. But if you do video, this camera really has some advantages for you. You've got the external recording, you got the raw, external, uh, raw video data output, uh, you have the SSD drive you can run through the USB, you've got the all intra uh, compression. The live streaming is absolutely incredible. I mean, if you live stream, and we do here at the Slant Lens, that alone makes this camera worth uh, the upgrade. When you put all those things together, $200 get the S52X makes perfect sense to me. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't do it. It gives you a lot of options. Even if you don't use a lot of uh, raw video, you have the option if you're going to be in the situation where you have to shoot a commercial or you have to shoot something a little more high end, you have that option. So there's my sense about it. Two great cameras. I'm pretty excited about the uh, S52X and can't wait to keep shooting. So there you have it. Check out some of our other camera review videos or some of our videos about shooting, which is a fun thing to do. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on cooking.